الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين Praise be to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the universe and Lord of the worlds the entirely merciful, the specially merciful Sovereign of the day of recompense it is you we worship and you we ask for help guide us to the straight path the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor not of those who have earned your anger or of those who are astray dear brothers and sisters uh, and all listeners and viewers um, Today we continue with the uh, interpretation of Surah Yusuf as appears in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, the holy book Al-Quran and as narrated in chapter uh, 12. Uh, Ibn uh, Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam uh, ended in the prison if you remember last week, Yusuf was admitted to the prison because they found out and it was clear that Yusuf was truthful, he was honest, and they were sure of his chastity. So instead, they uh, throw, threw him in the prison and he met two people, two prisoners who joined him and they look at him and saw the glory in his face and they approached him to interpret their dreams. Uh, then Yusuf, alayhi salatu wassalam, Joseph, peace be upon him, he took the opportunity to teach them the religion of Allah the religion of his ancestors, the religion of his father Jacob and grandfather uh, uh, Isaac and his great grandfather Abraham. It is the religion of uh, Tawheed, believing in one God, worshipping one God, the only God worthy of, of worship and worthy of uh, obedience. Then after he uh, uh, mentioned all of that to them, then he came to interpret their dreams. Uh, and before we go into that, I'd like also to recite a few uh, verses from the surah uh, so as we keep track of what we interpret. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال الملك إني أرى سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع عجاف وسبع سنبلات خضر وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخرى يابسات يا أيها الملأ أفتوني يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في رؤياي إن كنتم للرؤيا تعبون قالوا أضاث أحلام وما نحن بتأويل الأحلام بعالمين وقال الذين جاء منهما والذكر بعد أم أنا أنبئكم بتأويله فأرسلون يوسف أيها الصديق أفتنا في سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع عجاف وسبع سنبلات وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخرى يابسات لعلي أرجع إلى الناس لعلهم يعلمون 
قال تزرعون سبع سنين دأبا فما حصدتم فذروه في سنبله إلا قليلا مما تأكلون ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك سبع شداد يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك سبع شداد يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن إلا قليلا مما تحصنون ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصرون وقال الملك اتوني به فلما جاءه الرسول قال ارجع الى ربك فاساله ما بال النسوه التي قطعن ايديهن ان ربي بكيدهن عليم قال ما خطبكن اذ راوتن يوسف عن نفسه قلنا حاش لله ما علمنا عليه من سوء قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حصحص الحق أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين ذلك ليعلم أن لم أخنه بالغيب وأن الله لا يهدي كيد الخائنين وما أبرئ نفسي إن النفس لأمارة بالسوء إلا ما رحم ربي إن ربي غفور رحيم وقال الملك اتوني به استخلصه لنفسي فلما كلمه قال انك اليوم لدينا مكين امين قال جعلني على خزائن الارض اني حفيظ عليم وكذلك مكنا ليوسف في الأرض يتبوأ منها حيث يشاء نصيب برحمتنا من نشاء ولا نضيع أجر المحسنين ولا أجر الآخرة خير للذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We are still in the scene where Yusuf, peace be upon him, is in prison. So he moved from the luxury of the palace to the misery of the dark prison. Yet, Yusuf never forgot his duty as a prophet and his duty as a, a, a person who worships Allah and Allah alone to apply himself in the best possible way in in prison so yusuf never changed whether he is in prison or he is outside prison he is still that uh, chap with high moral conduct with supreme beliefs a connection to a noble family and uh, worship of his lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As I just, I was reciting, I was trying to summarize what happened last week. And he was admitted to prison after he refused to 
do what is unlawful and what is a crime and what is really a betrayal to his master as well. And after they have known of his um, truthfulness, honesty and chastity, they uh, decided to put him in jail. And he met two young people. They saw the glory and the light of prophethood and obedience of Allah in his face. They approached him and they asked him about to, uh, their dreams, two people, one dream each. And then Yusuf elaborated on his beliefs, elaborated that he uh, believes in one God and he worships uh, one God. And he also told them that the gods you are pray, uh, praying to and you are believing in are uh, just names you invented and names that your ancestors invented. ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has uh, not sent down any authority with these gods that you make yourself, uh, that you name yourself, that you gave names and your ancestors gave them names without any authority with the creator of all. So that was uh, uh, the uh, scene. And then Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam, Joseph upon uh, peace and blessing upon him, started to inter interpret the dreams for these two young chaps. يا صاحبي يا صاحبي السجن أما أحدكما فيسقي ربه خمرا وأما الآخر فيصلب فتأكل الطير من رأسه قضي الأمر الذي فيه تستفتيان O two companions of the prison as for one of you he as a servant will pour out wine for his lord Perhaps his Lord is the king, as we will learn. To drink, and as for the other, he will be crucified, and the birds shall eat from his head. Thus, in the case judged concerning which you both did inquire. First of all, he did not specify which interpretation to which dream although you may find it uh, obvious, but he never said to any of the two, your dream is interpreted such and such, and then turn to the other, your dream is interpreted such and such. But he generalized in a sense that he said, one of you shall, and then interpreted his dream, and the other one, and interpreted the other dream. The reason is that one of them is going to be crucified, is going to be executed for his crime that he did. And Yusuf did not want to, uh, to specify that to, to that uh, young chap to mitigate the impact of the realization of the dreams or the dream of the person who is going to be executed. So simply he turned to both of them, said, one of you shall pour wine to his master, uh, and the other one shall be crucified. And of course, crucifixion and then death, and then the birds will eat from his head. And he never specified, as I mentioned, to any of the two which dream is uh, belongs to, to which. Then privately, he talked to the one he thought he will uh, be saved, he will not be executed. وَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ مِّنْهُمَا ذْكُرْنِي عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ He turned to the one that he thought he will be saved and told him that, remember me when you talk to your Lord. Mention me to him. Tell him about me and my interpretation of the dreams. 
and the way I behaved in the prison. And he said to the one who he knew to be saved, mention me to your Lord, i.e. your king, so as to get me out of the prison. Of course, he, his intention was uh, to get help, to get out of the prison, because he did not really deserve to go to the prison in the first place. And uh, uh, he wanted, if you like, someone to talk on his behalf, to tell his, uh, to tell the king about him, to tell him about his ability to interpret the dreams and his behavior in the prison, and so on and so forth. Now, فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ But Shaytan, Satan, made him forget to mention it to his Lord. So Yusuf stayed in prison for a few more years. So now the situation uh, again is that Yusuf approached the person who thought who would be saved and told him, remember me with your Lord, with the king, tell him about me, tell him about my ability to interpret the dreams, uh, maybe my behavior, my, my character, etc. With the intention that Yusuf had to be freed from a place that he didn't deserve to be in, the prison. Unfortunately, that person, of course, both of them left the prison. One was judged to be executed, crucified. And then the, the person who was saved went back to his job in the palace serving the king. Why? So that person should have realized that Yusuf has this ability to interpret dreams. And then he should have remembered to tell the king about him. But unfortunately, he didn't. He forgot. And the, uh, the expression here is, فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ Satan made him forget. And this is uh, to uh, attribute bad things to Satan. Uh, he left uh, prison and then he may have been extremely happy to have been saved and instead of remembering Yusuf, indeed he, he forgot to uh, tell the king about Yusuf. فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ He stayed in prison a few more years. Now the word بِضْعَ in Arabic language it means three to nine. If you like, uh, rough translation is a few. Now, a few in English, it doesn't have a, a specific uh, number attached to it, but we know a few is, is not a large number. It is not, a few is not hundred, but if you compare it to some something larger, perhaps you could say uh, it's only a few dollars and you, you mean just not enough. But in Arabic, bid'a, it means, uh, it is a reference to a number, and that number is between three and nine. So Yusuf spent uh, three to nine years, and the interpreters of Al-Quran, the scholars say, it is most likely it was seven years. So he spent seven years in a miserable, dark prison uh, by being pure, by being uh, uh, truthful, by being honest uh, for his chastity, for refusing to do what is shameful and unlawful to do. Now from that point, he spent seven years. Now, how long did he spend before? It may be the case that this is at the beginning of his sentence. So when he was uh, admitted to prison or rather thrown into prison, if you like, 
Then two people came. So maybe that was in the, in the first a few days or in the first a few weeks or months, uh, Yusuf was in prison. And then after that uh, incident, if you like, he spent several years, Bid'a Sinin means several years, several, and Bid'a in Arabic is uh, three to nine. It means three or four or five or six or seven, eight or nine. Uh, and most likely he spent seven years in, in, in that prison. One more thing I'd like to really, uh, every time I pick a, a word in Arabic and try to uh, see the jurisprudence of that word. So the word is not just um, something we know its interpretation and meaning, but it has a, a picture behind it. It has a, a story. So the word, وَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ مِّنْهُمَا and he said to the one who he thought to be saved or knew to be saved. But really, dhanna is a word which means that, and there is also dhanna against a word shak. And both of these terms, it means that there is no 100% certainty. So it is short of certainty. Vanna, it means that there was no certainty. But in fact, if you use the word vanna, it means that if there is no certain uh, certainty, but there is the, the, the person is leaning to one of the beliefs or one of the meanings uh, in, in, a, in a strong way. Hence, sometimes vanna is, is used also in place of knowing something almost for sure as in surah al-kahf uh, they saw hellfire and they thought they would uh, be admitted into it they will fall into it so if they have seen it and they know what they have done so they were almost certain or or, or they were certain uh, but perhaps they had some sort of hope, if you like, not to go there. So the word dhanna, uh, it, 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 there is a, a balance between two situations or two meanings or two beliefs, but the person is leaning towards one in a stronger way rather than the other. Uh, that, uh, so it is short of certainty, but also it is leaning towards one of the meanings in a stronger way, but, but it is not, uh, as I said, it is not for sure hundred percent now check which is can be translated as suspicion also vanna can be translated into the word suspicion in, in in english but it is really a check it means that there is no certainty but there is no way to know which way that person is going so if it is a choice between two things or two beliefs or two two ways or two roots then there is nothing at all to distinguish one from the other. And sometimes that person go one way and sometimes goes the other way. So there is, there is a big difference between the word vanna and shek, although they may both be translated as uh, suspect or suspicion or below certainty, but vanna, as it is used here, vanna annahu najim minhuma, and he said to the one whom he thought or he knew to be saved it means that most likely that he will be saved and the interpret uh, interpretation is true but there is a, 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 an element of, of of uncertainty in there because at the end of the day this is a human effort put in interpreting the dreams albeit he was gifted by Allah by his uh, Lord but unless Allah reveals to him that he is right, he has a, 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 some sort of uncertainty. So these are the two words, dhanna and bid'a. As I said, bid'a, it means a few uh, or several, if you like, maybe several is, is nearer to bid'a. And it means that it is a number between three and, and, and nine. 
and most probably uh, seven. Now, again, I, I'd like to remind you that the, the use of wording and the use of meaning in the Holy Quran is always tied to the benefit the reader is getting. So it, can, it could have been very well a, a figure as we will see that in the, in the next uh, uh, verse, it really does say the, the number seven. Uh, there are many numbers in Al-Quran uh, from uh, one to 100,000. You can find that in Al-Quran. But here, it made it open-ended. And the reason it, it, it did not give a certain number, in my opinion, is that if Yusuf knew he would leave prison in three years or five or even ten, at least he could have that hope and he will be waiting for that time that he's going to leave prison. But putting no number and just leaving at a few years because he is himself in a state of suspense, he doesn't know. He was admitted without guilt. He was thrown in prison without any real reason for him to be in the prison. And the, the word bid'a, it gives you that feeling of uncertainty, of suspense, of not knowing when it's going to be the end. Although he did recommend that person to tell his Lord, to tell the king about him, but we know that he forgot so these human elements are there but what is certain in this uh, if you like uncertainty is that element of suspense of yusuf not knowing when he is going to leave prison when someone will remember him because at that time you are thrown in prison and they forget about you and if they forget about you you'd never know what's going to happen and exactly that word is, is giving us that feeling of did he stay three years, four years, seven years, nine years? Sure, we know that from the word that he didn't stay there forever. Even if we stop at that verse, we'll still have that hope because there is also an element of hope in the word bitter. It means, yeah, it can be up to nine years, but it's not forever. But again, there is no certainty when he is going to leave. So I, I leave this thought with you and, and I recommend when you read Al-Quran, you take care of every word in the verse, every expression. And remember that one word cannot really do in place of another word. Every word, every letter, every accent is meant there. Then now we are moving from another scene. So we, we the, the Quran is, we, we live in prison now. Of course, Yusuf is still there. He's going to spend a few more years. We don't know when he's going to, to leave. But now we are back in another scene. And that scene, وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَأْكُلُهُنَّ سَبْعٌ عِجَافٌ وَسَبْعَ سُنْبُولَاتٍ خُضْرٌ وَأُخْرَى يَابِسَاتٍ وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخرى يابسات يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في رؤياي إن كنتم للرؤيا تعبرون now وقال الملك and the king and it is Egypt for sure and the king of Egypt said but of course here it says وقال الملك it means the king said because there is no need to remind us of Egypt we know that since uh, some time ago, when Yusuf was uh, sold as a slave, he, he was in Egypt. And there is nothing to make us believe that he left Egypt. He, he went into the palace of Al-Aziz, of the uh, minister of treasury, and then into prison. So why, why mention the word uh, Egypt? There is no need. We, it is understood. And that is, again, uh, very uh, conspicuous in the Holy Quran that it doesn't really uh, uh, unnecessarily bring meanings and repeat things that can be understood within the verse. It's very succinct and very concise. And the king 
said, Verily, I saw in a dream seven fat cows. And of course, even here it didn't say in, in, in a dream. وقال الملك إني أرى سبع بقرات سما. So he said, uh, Verily, I saw seven fat cows whom seven lean ones were devouring, and of seven green ears of corn and seven other dry. And then he is addressing the al-mala, al-mala in, in, the, in the Quran, it means that the elite, those who are around him, it's not the people, they're not the common people or the servants or, or whoever. The al-mala are those who are around the king the ministers, the first minister, the advisors, uh, and, and so on, those who are close to him, the, the elite. Ya ayyuhal malau aftuni fi Now he's asking the elite. Oh, uh, notib uh, notables, uh, this is translated as mala mean, means yamla'ul ayn. It, it, they are uh, elite, they are people of importance, noticeable people, etc. Explain to me my dreams. If it be that you can interpret dreams. Again, I, I remind you of the sequence. If, if you know Arabic, and if you don't, I really recommend that you really study this beautiful language. So the sequence of events that وقال الملك, the, the king said, and then he said, I saw إني أرى. أرى, it means that I have seen more than once. So the word أرى, which I see, rather than I saw or I am seeing, it says that أرى, the word أرى, it means that there is some sort of repetition in what he saw. So it, it is not as if he saw that dream once. And it is if it is the same with us. If we if we dream something, we may pay no attention. But if that dream comes again and again, then it, it will have an effect. And then we'll, we'll, we'll try to seek uh, reasons why we are seeing this dream uh, uh, again and again. So the king may have seen this dream many times, and now he's coming in public, in, in, in uh, within the elite, I mean, and then he's asking them, this is the dream, seven uh, fat cows and seven uh, skinny ones. The skinny ones are eating, devouring the fat ones, and he's seeing uh, uh, seven green ears of corn and seven uh, uh, dry ones. And he's asking them, if you know interpretation, tell me, explain to me my dream, if it be that you can interpret dreams. Now what happens? Now in that elite around the king, it could be of course servants and people who are serving the king. And apparently that person was around although he, he may not, if you like, be part of the uh, elite uh, political system around him and the advisors, but he is a, a servant who comes in and out uh, at will because of his position. But before that, so it didn't tell us within this, uh, this congregation who is in that. But it, it did tell us before, قَالُوا أَضْغَاثُ أَحْلَامٍ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِتَأْوِيلِ الْأَحْلَامِ بِعَالِمٍ They said, mixed up false dreams, and we are not skilled in the interpretation of dreams. Now you may think this is maybe harsh, and it seems that there was a culture, judging from these two people who uh, were admitted to prison, at the same time of Yusuf, there was a culture of interpreting dreams. Now, perhaps I would say that uh, the, culture, the culture here in the UK, it does not really take much notice of that. I, I would say from my experience, but my culture, it does, and perhaps too much. 
and I think a balance is good. I remember one of my friends uh, I worked with, uh, I used to tell him, you know, I said, look, even if I keep for a few minutes, I will see a dream. You know, before uh, dawn time, after dawn time, whenever I, I really sleep, I will see something. So he said, and he, he was similar age to me. He said, I wish if I ever dream anything. I've never dreamt of anything. And I, for me, that was really news. I, I didn't think a person can live uh, like 50 years until or, or late 40s at that point of time, in time, and then not seeing a single dream. That for me, that was unbelievable. And a person like me is, is seeing dreams like several ones every night. And even if I, if I go, I keep on the, on the, on the sofa, I have a, a little nap, I may see a dream then. So why are they saying this? So there is, in my opinion, there is, uh, they, they care for dreams. And the, uh, the, uh, the answer is most probably, they don't want the king to, 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 uh, to get uh, hanged hang up with, with, the, with his dreams. They don't want him to worry. They want to comfort him. Uh, because he seemed to be worried. He seemed to have approached them after seeing the, the dream several times, and he is seeking an interpretation. So they just wanted to sort of uh, make it unimportant, just to listen, lessen its, uh, uh, its impact on the, uh, on the king and on his life. So they said that these are mixed up dreams because yeah sure not every dream means means much and in islam the, there are three types of dreams one dream is uh, we call uh, we call uh, ru'ya uh, which is a good dream uh, and a good dream it doesn't mean that it is necessarily seeing something good because you may something not so good but it is a ru'ya which means it is from allah it is an some sort of insp uh, inspiration and the prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace be upon him prophet muhammad he said that the dream of the believer is one out of 46 uh, parts of prophethood of course dreams are never taken as laws in islam never Who, whoever even even the dreams of the companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or good people or, or, or scholars, they are not taken in place of the text for sure, but they may mean something really important. And also the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ told us uh, that towards the end of time, the dream, uh, the believers' uh, dreams rarely uh, go wrong. So they see reality in their dreams so this is from allah and it is an inspiration the other one is is a bad dream and we call it hulum and it is something that makes you unhappy and uh, and by the way the first one the first dream which is 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 nice it's good to to tell those you love about it and the bad dream which is can be something horrible, something really annoying, something make you uh, irritated or, or scared or whatever, then don't talk any, uh, about it at all. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, It will not harm you, it will not really affect you, just, just let it go. And the third type of dreams is to see what usually you do during your, uh, your uh, day, you know, your life. You know, perhaps if you are a, a lecturer, you are thinking of students and exams and, 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 and papers. If you are a, a trader, you're thinking of buying and selling. And if you are, a, a, you know, a mother, you think, you know, you see your kids and so on. And so these are the three types of, of dreams. So they are trying to uh, uh, deviate him from thinking that this dream is important. So they said, forget about it. It's, it's nothing. It's adghath uh, ahlam. You know, uh, it's, it's just mixed up dreams. You know, a type of dream I mentioned is just, you know, 
mix a mix of things that mean uh, not very much. So, what happens next is really amazing. This, the person who left the prison and Yusuf told him, remember me when you, when you are out. Uh, mention me to your Lord, the king. Then he remembered after he forgot for many years. So when he told him, he, he left the prison, the other person, got crucified and he was saved and he came back to serving the king wine and you know he was in the you know within the quarters of, of the king so he forgot all about Yusuf but that time when the king was talking about his dream and no one was able to interpret his dreams then he remembered Yusuf وَقَالَ الَّذِي نَجَى مِنْهُمَا وَادَّكَرَ بَعْدَ أُمَّةٍ أَنَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِتَأْوِيلِهِ فَأَرْسِلُ Then the man who was released, one of the two uh, who were in prison, uh, was released, now at length remembered and said, وَقَالَ الَّذِي نَجَى مِنْهُمَا وَادَّكَرَ بَعْدَ أُمَّةٍ The one who was re released, and forgot. He now remembered after forgetting after a few years. I will tell you its interpretation. So send me forth. Well, send you where? So they asked them, he said, I know a person who can interpret that dream. I was with him. And that that's what happened. So he told the king, now he told him after, you know, Yusuf spent several years in, in prison. Now, the dream of the king triggered or jogged his memory. And then he remembered Yusuf. And now he said, okay, I know a person who's going to tell you that, that dream. So now he, he was sent to, to, the, to see Yusuf in the prison. And then he addressed Yusuf. يوسف أيها الصديق أفتنا في سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع عجاب وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخرى يابسات لعلي أرجع إلى الناس لعلهم يعلمون Oh Joseph, the man of truth, يوسف أيها الصديق He now is addressing Yusuf with a صديق A صديق means a man of, of, of uh, uh, truth or a, a man of truthfulness explain to us of seven fat cows whom seven lean ones were devouring and of seven green ears of corn and seven others dry that I may return to the people and that they may know so he told Yusuf the dream he said it's seven cows fat ones being devoured by skinny ones lean ones eating and then uh, seven ears uh, green ears of corn uh, and i i wouldn't say corn here i would say uh, wheat most probably but then uh, because corn is is different the ears are applicable to uh, to corn uh, to to uh, to wheat, sorry, to wheat and to barley, uh, to uh, other types of grain, but not for sure, not for corn. So that that translation, of course, I'm I'm using some sort of base to 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 translate. But uh, when I interpret myself, then I I pick up. So the seven ears of wheat, but it doesn't say in the in the verse whether what it is. It says seven ears, uh, but that is applicable to wheat rather than corn. So there are seven ears of, of green corns and seven ears of dried ones. And he said, Aftina. Uh, and the fatwa here, this is the word fatwa in Arabic, which means give knowledge about something, about fasting, about prayers, about 
to whether or not something is lawful to eat for a Muslim, uh, whether a behavior is, is right or wrong, whether it is uh, lawful to trade in, specific, in a specific way or not. So that is what we call fatwa uh, or khutia, which means that to give uh, a legal interpretation of the text to someone who needs it. And in this case, it is applied to the dreams. It means tell us, then what would you expect? If you were in prison for several years and then you have that ability to interpret dreams and that was the dream of the king, would you not say, okay, I'll tell you, but please remove me from here. Get me out and I'll tell you. I'm sure that that is something uh, 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 most of us would do. The, the first thing is really to trade and say, you know, why, why should I tell you? Get me out of here and then I'll tell you what, what it's all about. But that is not Yusuf. That is not the Prophet of Allah, Joseph. Immediately he gave the interpretation. No conditions attached. Immediately he knew the interpretation. He didn't even ask for time to think. Allah gave him that knowledge. So he said, for seven consecutive years, you shall sow as usual and that the harvest which you reap, you shall leave it in ears, except a little of it which you may eat. تَزْرَعُونَ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ الدَّأَبًا الدَّأَبْ it means that very hard work. It means that uh, you should work in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, growing and in, in agriculture for seven years that you should really do your very, very best. فَمَا حَصَدْتُمْ فَذَرُوهُ فِي سُنْبُولِ Whatever you harvest, leave it in its husk uh, or in its husks. Don't unshell it. Don't remove it from the husk. And they, uh, the, the scholars later on in the 20th century discovered that if you, if you leave the wheat or the barley or the uh, grain that they have husk, if you leave it in the husk, it can, um, uh, it can be good indefinitely. It can stay good for eating for a very, very long time. The disease cannot get into it. The insects cannot get into it. But if you shell it and you start to store it, then it will not last for uh, very, very long. So the advice here from Yusuf is, is that you, you uh, harvest for seven hard years and you leave it in its husks Apart from what you eat, of course, they're not going to, to they needed something to eat, but he said, Illa qalilan mimma ta'kulu, except a little of it which you may eat. So be careful, don't eat too much. That is all in the in, in the interpretation. So you harvest very hard for seven years, and what you um uh, uh, you know, when you harvest, then you leave it in its ears. You leave it with the husk for storage. Apart from a little bit you eat. So you take a little bit to survive on, but leave it. ثُمَّ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ سَبْعٌ شِدَادٌ يَأْكُلْنَ مَا قَدَّمْتُمْ لَهُنْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تُحْصِنُونَ ثُمَّ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ عَامٌ فِيهِ يُغَاثُ النَّاسُ وَفِيهِ يَعْصِرُونَ So after this good seven years, these are good seven years, uh, good for, uh, for, for uh, agriculture and harvesting, etc. This is what you should be doing, working very hard, keep it in the, in the ears, in the husk, store it, a little bit you eat, and the rest you store. And then after that, you will go through famine. In, in, in a nutshell. 
seven years of hard years. Then will come after that seven hard years, which will devour what you have laid by the uh, laid by in advance for them. That is to say, the seven hard years of of famine and and drought, because it's all attached with water. If there is no water, there is no agriculture, there is no plantation, and people will have famine. So, after the seven good years, you have seven hard years, they will eat what you have stored for them. يَأْكُلْنَ مَا قَدَّمْتُمْ لَهُنْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تُحْصِنُونَ So these seven years, uh, hard years, there will be no harvesting, there will be hard years, there will be drought, there will be famine, but then you will make use of what you have stored in the uh, during these uh, the previous seven years i hope you you get seven years of of seven good years you harvest and you live in the uh, ears and in the husk uh, for storage a little bit is for usage because people need to eat in these seven years then seven years you'll have nothing then you'll have to consume what you stored ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصر. Then thereafter will come a year in which people will have abundant rain and in which they will press, press juices, wine, oil, etc. So seven good years, seven very hard years, and then after the seven hard years, it's really a good thing. And I think you know one of the reasons I wanted. To do the interpretation of Surah Yusuf is is really to uh, to talk about uh, issues that humanity went through. So it is not it is not uh, having uh, uh, an epidemic, a pandemic, a famine, a drought, uh, earthquakes. It is it is part of human life, and if you look into history, you'll find a, a few of that. So patience and good planning and people getting together is always uh, the solution for uh, the hard time we, we go through. And hopefully it's not going to be seven years. It's going to be uh, much less than that, God willing. Now, again, the Quran does not say uh, that the servant went back and he said, okay, I met Yusuf and I told him, you know, immediately he said, So it just left all of that to mean that all this information went to the, to the king via uh, this man who is uh, currently the king's uh, servant and who used to be with Yusuf in the, in the prison. وقال الملك اتوني به فلما جاءه الرسول قال ارجع الى ربك فاساله ما بال النسوه اللاتي قطعنا ايديهن ان ربي بكيدهن عليه the, the king was very impressed and it made a lot of sense and this is really to warn about something to come if people didn't know that they would have just went through good life for this coming seven years and not realizing that there are years of famine and years of, of drought that if they didn't plan beforehand for them, it would have been an absolute disaster. The king was very impressed and the king said, bring him to me. But when the messenger came to him, to Yusuf, said, return to your Lord and ask him what happened to the women who cut their hands. Surely my Lord Allah is well aware of their plot. Do you imagine that? He has been in prison for several years, perhaps seven, perhaps nine, perhaps a little bit less, but he has been in, 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 in this dark, bad place for a long time. And now it's his opportunity to leave. And yet he is not leaving. He said, 
in a nutshell, he said, no. You first asked these women, I remember the women with the banquet and the, with the knife, and when they saw him, they cut their hands. He said, what happened to these women? Because it seems that this story was, well, it became a culture. People knew about it. It was well known. Even the king knew about it. Well, at least heard about it, maybe not investigated for sure. Even Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if I was in place of Yusuf, I would have left the prison. If I was imprisoned like Yusuf, I would have accepted to be freed. But then remember, uh, that is unquote now, Yusuf, if he left, it would have been like a royal pardon for a crime he didn't commit. His reputation is extremely important for him. So he didn't leave. He said, can you ask the women what happened to them? Inna rabbi bikaydihinna ali. My Lord Allah is well aware of their plot. No, so he did not leave the prison. He didn't say, oh yeah, this is the opportunity. It was an opportunity for him to raise the issue and to gain his um, vindication and innocence. Because have he left prison without that, as I said, it could have been simply a royal pardon of a criminal who did something bad, but the king pardoned him, and he didn't want that. Then the king took it ser seriously. He turned to the women, he brought them, and he said, he started to question them. قَالَ مَا خَطْبُ كُنَّ إِذْ رَاوَتُنَّ يُسُفَ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قُلْنَ حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا عَلِمْنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ سُوءِ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ الْآنَ حَصْحَصَ الْحَقِّ أَنَا رَاوَتُهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ لَمِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ The king said to the women, what was your affair when you did seek to seduce Yusuf? The women said, Allah forbid. No evil uh, we know against him. ما علمنا عليه من سوء. He's a good man. We have not seen anything bad about him. So they witnessed that he didn't do anything wrong. Then, of course, the the if you like, the main witness or the main even uh, accused now is, is talking. قالت امرأة العزيز, the wife of Al-Aziz, the wife of the uh, minister of uh, treasury, said, now the truth, the truth is manifest. It is obvious to all. It was I who sought to seduce him. And he is surely of the truthful. Total vindication from the women and from the wife of Al-Aziz that he has done nothing wrong whatsoever. And the king heard that from them directly. So now Yusuf, not only is going to leave the prison, but it's not a royal pardon. It is total conviction, innocence. And then, ذَلِكَ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنِّي لَمْ أَخُنْهُ بِالْغَيْبِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي كَيْدَ الْخَائِنِينَ وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِبَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Then Yusuf uh, said, I asked for this inquiry in order that he, Al-Aziz, may know that I betrayed him not in secret. And verily, Allah guides not the plot of the betrayers. So that was also one of his aims. So as Al-Aziz himself is sure now, there was no betrayer. Nothing happened behind his, his back because he, he had mixed uh, talks and mixed stories. Couldn't believe which one is right. Now Yusuf saying, I want him to know that there was no betrayal committed. And then uh, just uh, the last uh, verse before we leave. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And I free not myself from the blame. Verily, 
the human uh, is inclined to evil except when my Lord bestows his mercy upon whom he wills. Verily, my Lord is oft forgiving, most merciful. How humble is Yusuf. And we'll come back by the will of Allah, inshallah, next week, if Allah gives me enough life to just shed a little bit more light on this. Yusuf is humble, saying, after all, we are humans. And he has done nothing. But as if he is giving some sort of vindication even to those who accused him. Not only that he wants a vindication for himself, he wanted vindication for the women, he wanted vindication for, for the wife of Al-Aziz. Such a noble person, such a, a, a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is usual about these people. These people are, are at a very supreme uh, status of morality and 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 behavior uh, uh, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu hadha al-qawl wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum fastaghfiruh i say this and i ask Allah to forgive me and and you uh, thank you very much wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allahu Allah